back to the sculpt here. Basically, we want to continue polishing some of these secondary details. We want to make sure that we're using um, the texture and materials to really carry through and do a lot of that heavy lifting for us. Any of these sections that are feeling a little bit soft still, we're going to want to make sure we kind of harden and emphasize those a bit more. The, the key here is making sure that we can see the planes um, and that it doesn't feel doughy. When you start getting rounded shapes, especially with rocks, um, even though it is organic sculpting, uh, it's not something you really want. So we're just going to start by getting some noise on this. We're going to do surface. We're going to hit noise. And then inside here, we're going to go to noise plug for noise plugin. Check erosion. We'll just keep the default settings. This is just to get us some surface noise initially. Play with this curve. That way there's areas that do have it, but a lot of areas that don't as well. Playing around with this scale. We might do a few different scales, so we'll start large initially. Also amplify the strength a little bit. And now we can use this layer to control the strength of the noise and we're going to do that with each one so we do a new layer change where these are coming out this is just getting that surface noise for us so that's how you can quickly get your surface detail your surface noise and we could have went even higher res but this is fine for what we're doing for sure all right now let's start doing some cracks let's we'll start with the damn standard i'm just going to use this to emphasize areas hey guys real quick if you're enjoying this content and find value in it and want to support me in the growth of this channel please subscribe and leave a comment it could be where you're from what you like, what you don't like about these videos. It really means a lot and will go towards higher quality videos for all of you. All right, back to the video. And then use the trim smooth border afterward. I have a custom brush pack, but when I just updated ZBrush, it reset everything. So we're just gonna use the default brushes. So it's a good way to do it by default. It's just damn standard and trim smooth border together can pretty much get you whatever you need. We're also gonna go through some areas and pull away some of that noise manually just to give some areas that feel contrasted. Now we'll go ahead and duplicate this and this will be our low poly and we're going to do the decimation. So uh, Z plugin, decimation master, and we're going to pre-process current. It's going to go through and kind of figure out what it needs to know for us to decimate it. So let's do this, making the low poly is really easy. And then we'll just use some procedural techniques to go ahead and quickly make our unwrap. All right. So now I'm going to do decimate current and we want to set how many polygons we want. Let's aim for let's do 0.3. So it's 20,000 polys. And this is going to be our low poly. We're going to bring it into max and then we're going to uh, take care of the unwrap and re-export it from there. All right, so now they're in the exact same spot. So we're going to select both, we're pivot, effect pivot, center to object. And we're also going to lower or pivot. And once that's there, we'll zero it out. So we'll boot this to the origin. So then we're going to re-export the high poly from this spot. Same thing for the low, but we need to do our low unwrap. Let's export this. We're going to do OBJ. We can look at this with the weighted to see what kind of angles we want to still read, keep them sharp. It's worth testing. If anything, we can just come back and get rid of the uh, edges. But I think it can be handy sometimes when you bake down with the edges reading the way you want to like this. And for this, we're just going to use Unrillo, do organic, 2K. Could go through and do our seams but for the sense of the live stream and the video i might just keep it as is and let's go ahead and do our bake real fast let's check this out like mesh maps it's first time using this with the new setup so let's go ahead and grab our high poly so we can see our cage and we can tighten it up and see it in real time if it turns red that means the bake is running into some uh, artifacting problem areas we'll get it as close as we can without having any errors and i actually did mean to slice this cliff but it's okay and we should be able to see this in real time now too let's go ahead and see if this gives us a good bake Seems really fast for time 16. Okay, well that's reading really nice. It's not too bad. 
So the first thing I would do before I would start using any pre-made materials uh, would be just establishing some colors. I would do a fill layer to get started just to establish the basic color. And we can see from our reference, I'm actually just going to use the color picker and get a color from that. And while we're doing this, we're going to establish just like some basic roughness. So let's go ahead and add another fill layer. Let me just change this. And now for the for the masking, so you do right click. Well, you could just drag a smart mask too, which is what we're going to do. So if you go over to the left right here, smart masks. We're going to go ahead and start with dirt cavities. We'll drag it over our fill layer. Obviously, that, that, that doesn't look great yet. That's OK. Click on our mask builder and we'll lower the curvature a little bit. This is just some basic AO to get started. So that gradient, so we get a little bit more spread and a little bit. Uh, no, no scatter, actually. Um, but what you can do now is you can uh, we do another fill layer in here. You can grab a procedural texture or we'll grab a grunge map in this case and we'll throw it in there and what we're going to do with this is this is actually going to be a subtract so it's going to take away some additional areas from the dirt you know we can control the settings right this can all be set up with your uh, smart material as well we do something that doesn't subtract it all the way something in kind of the mid tones add some more variation to the previous dirt that was already in there let's get some of these color variations up then we'll add on another, another layer that's a little bit more bright and a little bit more yellow. And then we'll layer on some procedural masking on top and it'll, it'll be getting us there for sure. I'm just kind of blending in some of those areas a little bit, just kind of fading them off. I feel like we need a little bit more uh, darker rock kind of painted in there. So we'll go ahead and do that layer above this. We'll probably adjust the opacity to kind of pull this layer back some, but it's just to get some extra variety in the sculpt and all the texturing. If you were trying to do a stylized um, texture, a lot of this process would be well, very similar. I mean, this is obviously a hand-painted technique, um, but the difference would be like towards the end, adding the high-frequency details that we'll be emphasizing here soon. Um, that's what's going to make it more realistic. So and this will just help our end texture read better and have some more artistic quality to it. So now we'll start moving into some of those brighter colors. Do a color correct. Cool. Like that. Now let's bust out the texture I made. If you're importing a bunch of textures, you can shift click all of them and then tell them to be a texture. And if you want to import it to just the current session you're working on, you'll do that. But if you want to have it always, just put it in your library. So we'll do a new fill layer. So if you right click and go to uh, add levels, you can choose what you're adjusting. So first we'll adjust this height. Lower this quite a bit, balancing it out a little bit more. If we go to normal, we lower the strength in here. Something like that's not too bad. And we can also have it tile more. So it is a tiling texture, so if we go back, change this all, we'll also change it to triplanar, and then we'll have it tile like twice. This seems actually pretty good. So you see our other colors that we painted are still doing a lot for us. So if we took them both away, this is what it would be, which still looks cool. So the texture I worked on is sweet, but you put both these in there too, it adds a lot more. And we're not quite done. Let's mess with that roughness a little bit. Let's just see if we can add some variation. Have the light catch it a little bit more. So the next thing we need to do is we look back at our reference, add a few areas that are a little bit darker still, um, and then like these white kind of chipped edges. So let's do another fill layer. Oh wait, I hit tab. If you hit tab, I guess that hides your UI. Smart masks. Let's do, let's use moss, but we're not gonna use it as moss. Even though actually it looks like it could work for the damaged uh, rock edges. That isn't what I was going to do, but I like that. So we'll do another layer underneath. Let's be a darker rock. Maybe we'll try this underneath. And we'll be able to uh, adjust the size of this or something like this. And we'll go back down to this and we'll grab our color again. Just some color variation, some darker rocks. And what I can do is I can take that same texture that I had earlier we can make a darker version of that and mask it off in a certain area. Take this layer, copy it. It does actually bring out the details, layering it like that. I'll lower the opacity. I'm just going to change the rotation. We're going to add a fill. It's going to be a subtract. Use a grunge. Just adding some more color variation. We'll lower this a little bit too. So it's not as strong. And there's, I mean, there's more we could do, but that is how I would approach all of this. We could, you know, spend more time doing some chipped edge damage 
bringing out some more of those yellow areas in the, in the reference but overall that's how you would do it hope you enjoyed the tutorial i know some parts were a little bit slow uh, just getting used to doing live streams and everything but hopefully there was some uh, valuable material in there and i'm gonna edit it all down to a, a bite-sized uh, chunk that way you could reference through really quick so um i appreciate anyone who stopped on by to watch the video it means a lot to me and uh, i'll catch you guys next time